What's up, electricians? The future of e-bikes is here. This is the Electric One. It's next on the channel. Let's go. Here's the one. This is the first e-bike that is affordable with a pinion gearbox made it to a Gates carbon belt drive here. And this aimed at serious commuters, all right? So if you are a serious commuter out there and you want an e-bike that fits that lifestyle and uh, is maintenance free, this is the new it bike of 2024. So right now it sells for around 2200 bucks. I think it's 2299 with a extra battery. So you get two batteries. It's a 14 amp hour here on the down tube. But this is Lex's first attempt here at uh, something different. And uh, it's become my one of my favorite bikes to ride uh, since I've had it for about a month now. Uh, it's got the best power to weight ratio in the industry. Meaning that's a 750 watt motor back here. It's their M24 quiet motor with stealth technology. And it peaks out at 1310 watts. Now this e-bike only weighs, it weighs less than 60 pounds. Um, I think it's 55 pounds overall. So this thing is quick and it's fast. It can get you up to 20 miles an hour very quickly, uh, basically faster than pretty much every other e-bike out there with a similar style motor, um, 750 watt. So this is something that um, serious computers I think are gonna really love. And uh, electric is really pushing the envelope here with this kind of e-bike, it's sort of the next level and I think this is the future of e-bikes. So with an electronic shifting and a carbon belt drive, that's probably where we're going in 10 years, guys. But it's here now, it's here in 2024, and electric has made that happen. And one thing I wanna mention about the bike is that you don't have to put on, turn on the automatic shifting. You can just use the bike as you normally would without downloading the app and, and for pinion and changing the settings in there because this works just like a normal bike does. These are just, it's electronic shifters up here. So instead of the hydraulic or uh, the mechanical ones you're, nor you're normally used to, it's the same thing, just in an electronic format, and it shifts up and down based on your needs. So you can ride it out of the box just like that, uh, just like a regular, uh, more traditional bike. Uh, but with electric one, it's electronic, and again, I think that's the future of, of uh, e-bikes right there. You're looking at it on the uh, right side handlebar. So the Pinion C1.6i gearbox is the uh, sort of a pinnacle of engineering here. If you want to buy this on an e-bike today, it only comes on those strummers, which are made in Switzerland, and they cost like $10,000 or more. Electric has put this technology into a $2,000 e-bike. So they got a lot of credit for bringing this kind of technology down to an affordable price that people will like. A pre-select feature automatically sets the rider's gears, allowing effortless auto shifts while coasting, upshifting downhill, and downshifting uphill. And convenience uh, start select feature also lets riders dictate their starting gear, allowing for split-second starts when the light turns green or you jump into a bike lane, for example. There's also an app that comes with the uh, pinion gearbox there where you can change some of the settings and change what gear you want the bike to start into when you do uh, turn it on. So we'll get into that shortly. But what else is on this bike? I told you it's a 750 watt motor, peaks at 1310 watts. You're looking at uh, 20.2, I think it's 0.1, oh, 2.5 inch uh, tires here with a uh, three millimeter hippo skin with an air mid flock blinker and a shark skin protection on sidewalls for a pinch flat protection there. 
and those are running on 180 millimeter rotors with hydraulic disc brakes from electric. You can see it's a rigid front fork, so you don't have suspension on this. And the front light is attached to that front uh, fender there. Uh, electric says you can remove the fork and put other forks on there. You're probably going to lose that light though because it's attached to the fender. And you do have a, a rear working brake light which is right here on the back fender. Here's a look at the uh, carbon belt drive here. Of course, this is maintenance free. It doesn't require any lubricant. You're never gonna have to throw some oil on there. It's got uh, it's carbon uh, fiber reinforced belt. Uh, it's a chainless drivetrain essentially. It's clean, quiet, smooth. And it's auto an automotive, creative, uh, automotive grade belt uh, will last longer than standard chains. Doesn't rust, doesn't require lubricant. And again, it runs smoother and provides for a more quieter ride on your travels. Here is the 14 amp hour UL certified battery from Electric. Again, if you buy this bike today for $22.99, you get a second battery for free that you can basically throw onto the rack or something and carry it with you. Uh, but that's a uh, battery that should give you about uh, 60 miles of range, according to Electric. And um, again, this bike weighs 55 pounds, so it's on the lighter side, so you don't need a huge battery. They get a decent mileage of range on, uh, on this thing. So uh, 14 amp hour, 48 volts is what you're working with here. Uh, it does have a, a button here. It, the battery will go to sleep on you. So if you park it overnight, hit that button, it'll wake the battery and you can start riding. You also have quick release pedals here. So you can easily uh, put those back uh, whenever you want. And also on the front tire here, it's a quick release uh, front axle. Um, it's a uh, but it's a through axle, so uh, you do, it screws in, but you can easily unscrew it and with this uh, lever right here and take the uh, wheel off if you need to. So I'm six footer and this bike fits me uh, pretty well. Um, it's, a, it, it's on the smaller side e-bike guys, so keep that in mind. They did that specifically because it's for commuting. So if you want to take this on a train, on a ferry boat, um, this is a very uh, lightweight, uh, you know, uh, small compact package here to get you on your way. It's sort of a compact car of e-bikes, if you will. Uh, I think the styling is pretty nice. It's got these adjustable handlebars here, so you can bring those uh, back or forward based on your needs uh, to help with the reach. And of course, you have a seat post here. I have a suspension seat post I'm putting on here, so stay tuned for that. And we'll be doing a uh, you know commuting test with this thing. I'm gonna put it on a train, uh, take it up to Haven, Connecticut, and ride around put a bunch of stuff on the back and uh, see how it does. So we'll uh, put that through its paces in a future video. Uh, but uh, I think overall styling, this comes in fog gray. It's kind of a, it's a dark gray overall. It's your one and only color you can get. Uh, no other colors yet. And um, it's a pretty nice looking e-bike guys, pretty slick. You can pop the handlebars down to make this bike even more slimmer. Okay, and so as you can see here, this e-bike is got a very skinny profile when you do that. Um, you can slide it into a car, um, and uh, it's got a really low profile when it comes to uh, sizing. Let's take a look at the handlebar. Of course, you have these locking uh, grips. I've uh, added my own bell. Here is your shifters. These are electronic shifters up and down uh, for shifting. We'll get into that shortly. Of course, your hydraulic disc brake levers, display, and your typical uh, control pad for every electric, and your left side uh, thumb throttle. So you have a left side thumb throttle here on the electric one. Now, when it comes to the display, it's the new uh, display that electric has on their other new bikes. It's the M7C2 in color, and it does all those special things, all the same things you've been used to pretty much, uh, just in a color format. And you also have the ability to blink the lights, which I'm doing now. As you can see there, front and back in the settings. Um, and uh, that's what the electric display looks like here in the shade. Okay, so by the way, this is a cadence sensor e-bike, guys. So there's a cadence sensor on this e-bike. And you can control the settings of that cadence sensor from within this app here. This is the Smart Shift app from Pinion, as you can see here. And what's neat about this cadence sensor on the electric one is it's 96 magnets. The usual cadence sensors, the cheap ones on all the cheap e-bikes, are like, I think, 12 magnets overall. This is a 96, so much more uh, refined pedal experience when you're doing that. And you can change that cadence from within the app. 
So I'm going to connect to the uh, pinion gearbox here. I got the app open. It's trying to connect right now, actually. It says connecting. Unable to connect. All right, so there's been a few issues with uh, some of the other YouTubers saying that it doesn't connect right away. So we're gonna try this again. I think I heard you. I just shifted a couple times and you heard that there. Uh, I'm gonna connect to the device. Actually, let me delete this and try this again. All right, let's scan for the app. Or scan for the uh, pinion here uh, within the app. And you're gonna pair it to your phone just like you would normally a uh, Typical U bike app, for example. Okay, I didn't turn the bike on, so I probably should have done that. But let's add a device again. Scan for devices. Connection successful. Uh, now configure smart shift. Okay, so uh, I hit the, um, I pressed down on the lower uh, the gear shifter here for about a few seconds, a couple of beeps, and then it seemed to connect. So I heard that was a trick to you getting to connect properly. So here is the Smart Shift app. And you have basically two things to turn on. You have some settings as well. In the settings, we have the, uh, well, you can calibrate the uh, Smart Shift uh, gearbox right here. Let's do that first since I've need to do that. So I'm going to calibrate it. And you can hear the bike going. You see the, the light blinking right there. Yeah, calibration successful. Excellent. Um, you can also do reverse trigger mapping, so if you want to, you can change how these um, it changes from high to low and, and low to high, for example. I'll keep it like it is. Uh, I don't want to do that. Um, and now, here are the two settings mainly that will uh, people will like. So, there's start select and then pre-select. So, with start select, let me read to the uh, what that means. Um, start select can be activated by to support the... Uh, Safe and efficient starting is very important, it says, especially for e-bikes. Start select can be activated to support this. Set your desired starting gear according to your preference, and it will automatically engage after stopping. So I'm going to turn it on. And uh, under pre-select, oh, I want to set the start gear, actually. And I'm going to set it to start in third gear. So it should be pretty easy to pedal if you're at a dead stop, if you're on a hill, things like that. That's what that's good for. You can set it all the way up to six. Or to one, so there's six gears on the C bike. Now, pre select is uh, when coasting, pre select automatically shifts into the gear that matches your speed. So, this is where the automatic shifting comes in here. For example, following downhill sections, this function helps you to charge into a climb without having to manually shift down first. Uh, when stopping, pre select automatically shifts into the pre selected starting gear that we just set before. Uh, so Pre-select can only be activated in combination with a start gear. Okay, so there you go. Uh, you can't have one or the other, I guess. Um, so uh, pre-select, start gear, we're in third, accept, okay. And then there's a target cadence here. So this is the cadence you can do for the shifting. Um, and there's a range here of numbers. I don't know exactly what this means, but we'll, we'll We'll leave it at 60 here, see how that feels. And if I notice any difference by changing those numbers, I'll, I'll come back to it. But uh, there's some settings in here, some notifications. Uh, you can restart the smart shift as well. You can send some service data. But that's a look at the app and how it works. So let's get on the bike and try it out. This bike is nimble and agile. I mean, I could do some really uh, crazy swerves on this thing. Come in at an angle, tack that corner. I'm only a PS2, I'm doing 20. Coming down off that hill. Future, t future uh, YouTubers there, what do you think? I'm running it with no hands right now. It's very, very balanced, despite having only two and a half inch tires. 
And uh, one thing about these gears, you don't know what gear you're in. You kind of got to do it by pedal feel. Um, if you feel you're in a higher gear, drop it down. If you feel you're in a lower gear, drop, you know, bring it up. I did unlock the bike as well, so it's class three. Comes as class two, I believe. But this is essentially the electric XP light on steroids, guys. It's uh, it's as lightweight as an XP light almost, but uh, with a lot more power um, and uh, electronic shifting and uh, maintenance free, all that good stuff. So. I guess you call the XP light it's a uh, it's second cousin or something. Let's go do a speed test first. Again, throttle is 20 miles an hour. I'm gonna throw it in PS5 over here and uh, I'll show you how fast it gets to uh, 28. Whoa, just as soon as you put it in five, you just feel that power come on. Right, let's do it from a dead stop here. All right, here we go, PS5, speed test on the electric XP, electric one, sorry. We're already at 20, that's at like three seconds, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. That was a piece of cake, guys. I think this is like, on my other bikes, it would take me, I would hit 28 like over here somewhere. That was uh, 50 yards back, I hit it at 28. So it's really quick, it gets up to the power really fast. It spins up uh, like you're not used to on a regular e-bike. Let's try that again going back because that was a lot of fun. You just feel that surge behind you and uh, it gives you a lot of confidence. 24, 25, 26, 27, and then 28 right there. And really, I, I was paddling hard, but not that hard. So, power to weight ratio is freaking awesome. We'll start with we'll do throttle only first. See how the 750 watt does. Uh, this 750 watt is quieter than my Express 750 for some reason. So, uh, I got a couple comments about that Express motor that was it's kind of loud, but this one is not. So I'm not sure what the difference is, but I can feel I can hear the uh, painting shifting down there, even though I'm not pedaling. I'm at 17, gaining speed here, 18. Wow, this thing's quick. 19, almost at 20 here. 19.6. All right, I'm gonna start pedaling up here. Here's where it gets steep, right here. 16, 15. Man. This thing is just cruising uphill. 14. Gonna hit 13. I don't think we're gonna break 12. Might not break 13. 12.9. Wow. 13 miles an hour up that hill. Crazy. Let's go do a downhill run and see how it does. I'm just trying to test this automatic shifting into a hill. I can't quite get it to shift for me, so I gotta get some more details on how that works. Well, it's not shifting for me uphill. I can hear it down there. It just I stopped pedaling and it went back to third gear. So, all right, no power. Let's test how it does on a downhill coast. Yeah, it's definitely shifting downhill. So maybe it doesn't shift uphill for you. Maybe you have to use the uh, shifters.
32, 33, 34. Wow. Hit the brakes at the driveway here. Nice control stop. Oh, those brakes are extremely grippy. All right. So the bike was definitely shifting uh, as I was going downhill based on my speeds. I tried the pedals a couple times. I could feel resistance there, so it's it's detecting as you go downhill and what gear to be. Now the reason this is a Cadence Sensor e-bike is because it's for commuting, so you don't want to sweat while you're going to work. So Cadence Sensor e-bike is a much better application for commuting overall. Um, so I like my likes and dislikes about the bike. Well, dislikes, I'll start out with, um, you can't tell what gear you're in. It's a little bit annoying, but I think after a while you get used to it. Um, there's no front foot, a suspension fork on there. You know, for 20, 200 bucks, whatever it is, uh, I'm gonna might probably miss that suspension on there if you go over a lot of bumps. Uh, electric's trying to keep the cost down. All that money went into the opinion gear box there. Um, it's gonna need a suspension seat post as well, of course, but uh, I think for its design purpose, it's an excellent e bike. Uh, likes, of course, the power rate ratio. That's the best part for me, it's just that push you get, particularly when you put it in PES 5. It just takes off on you, spins up really fast. Uh, the lightness of it, the agility of it. So I think it will make for an excellent, you know, uh, mass commuter type of e-bike. If they want to train, bus, whatever it is, and you put it on those racks. And those buses have those front racks, I think, for bikes. Trains have those hangers um, in uh, every other car. And uh, I'm going to try it out too. I'm going to take it on a train and see how it does. So stay tuned for that video, but. Look, if you're looking, for, if you're a serious commuter and you want like a maintenance free e bike, you want some of that automatic shifting, it doesn't go, it doesn't shift all the way when you're going up a hill. But if you're in that pre select um, or start select, you'll, it'll start you out in year three or whatever, so you can start pedaling up the hill and help yourself. Uh, then switch into the uh, more of the manual gear selections from there. But uh, that's a look at the Ledger One, guys. And definitely more coming soon. I'm going to trick it out and take it on the train. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I'll put a link in the description. If you want to buy one of these, please click that link and make a small commission uh, based on those purchases and you help out the channel. Hit the like button. Hit subscribe. I'll see you in the next crisscross, guys. I'm out.